Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Linda Peek Shat. She's from Lipscomb University. She's with the Sue and Nelson Andrews at Leadership Institute out there at the university. Uh, Linda, we were talking a little bit about um, uh, the situation with, with Mrs. Clinton. Uh, her use of emails uh, while she was in Secretary of State's office uh, continues to be a problem. It's, it's raised a lot of questions about trust and transparency for her. If you were working in her campaign, how would you advise her to diffuse that issue, particularly since it's continuing to be investigated by the Justice Department? Well, because it is being investigated by the Justice Department, there's very little she can do except to continue to say what she has, and that is that any documents that are now classified were not classified when she was using them or when they were on her and server. And Democrats have to hope she's right about that and, and that she doesn't get indicted while she's there. Well, candidate. that's right. We could have a very interesting situation where, um, you know, where she is still, as Donald Trump reminds people, uh, still under investigation. And, and, and her husband, former President Bill Clinton, seems to be an issue, too. Trump, speaking of Trump, he brought that up. In fact, he almost seemed to be blaming her for the alleged infidelities that he was involved with, like she wasn't a strong enough well, spouse Well, you know, case. I mean, I don't think that plays really well with women to, to you know, to blame to, make to her blame the, to the make, wife, to make her the yeah. victim. Uh, but, and I, but I think Trump has his own issues that, you know, if, if, if that becomes an issue in the campaign, and I think that... A lot of rocks that, to pick up and throw Yeah, I, I think there are lots of things there. But I do think uh, the other issue that that uh, Senator Clinton, Secretary of State Clinton has um, about releasing the transcripts of her of her speeches, speeches to, to Wall Street, to Wall Street uh, is one that she could handle pretty quickly. And I, unless, unless there's something there, I think what she's holding on to is that it should be a standard for everyone and that everyone in the race should release all their speeches. But I think she needs to do something there in releasing. Uh, of course, what I might advise her to do is pack up every speech she gave in the last three years. And <laughs> and send a bunch of boxes over and let people go through them. <laughs> and the turmoil in both parties and around the country has led again to talk of a third party. Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York, is talking about it. Do you think that's very likely? And it's very difficult to run as a third party. As I recall in 1980, President Carter faced a third party challenge as well from John Anderson. Uh, he did. Um, and there was, you know, John Anderson wanting to be in the debates and that type of thing. But I, no, I don't think, I, Mayor Bloomberg was a fabulous mayor and has done some great things, but I do not think that he will get in unless it's a Sanders-Trump race. In fact, I know the people who are advising him and we wouldn't see him begin to do that, but he'd have to do it by mid-March. He'd have to begin to get on the ballot by mid-March. Bloomberg hurts the Democrats maybe more than the Republicans if he does get in and qualifies in enough states? I think that's probably right. Uh, so let's let's talk some more about uh, uh, the, the what happened to the Bushes. And what, this is a brand race. Uh, the, Donald Trump may be the first presidential candidate we've had that actually is his brand before he ever got into the race. And he's got a brand outside of politics. He's got his own university, which came up during the recent debate. He's got his own, uh, he's got his own Air Force, for that matter. And certainly he's got a real estate and hotels and things like that. His brand he's done pretty well with right now. Though the Clintons have a brand, too. If that becomes the fight, Donald Trump's already indicated he's going to go after the brand. He's had a pretty good success in destroying other candidates' brands. He does. He destroyed the Bush brand, I think, by, uh, you know, he went after what he thought were weaknesses, whether it was low energy or uh, George W.'s uh, invasion into Iraq. He's gone after, I think, the Rubio brand uh, in, the, in the last debate by trying to reinforce this idea that he has memorized speeches and that he's too young and he doesn't know anything about business. He's gone after the Cruz brand, the strongest, I think, where he's gone straight to the evangelical truth-telling idea called and called him a liar and, and really exposed his dirty tricks. Um, I, I think the interesting thing, though, about the Trump brand, he talks about winning. And Ben Carson hit this a little bit in the closing of the last debate when he said, you, do you want a president that you can be an example for your children and you can be proud of? And the one thing I think we have to acknowledge, I think the Democrats will use, is that Donald Trump has won by doing everything we tell our children not to do. He has bullied, he has called people names, he has retweeted things he knows not to be true, and those are all things we are trying to get our children not to do. As we close out, let me tell you a little bit about your former boss, Jimmy Carter. He's made a 
courageous, miraculous, it seems, almost fight against cancer. How is he doing right now? What's the latest you hear about his, his health? Uh, well, I, I actually talked to some folks this week, and he's doing great. He is living every day. He was cancer-free in January, and, uh, of course, there'll be regular scans. But uh, he's he's doing what, uh, what Hamilton Jordan said that he always did, and that is he gets up every day wondering and figuring out how he can make the world a better place. Now, he has been become perhaps the most successful and highly regarded former president that we've ever had. He had obviously issues in the polls and things like that, and he did just serve one term. But what's been his secret to not letting, for being, not to let the fact that he got defeated for a second term by Ronald Reagan keep him from being embittered and sort of withdrawing from, from, from public life, the way other presidents perhaps have done in the past? Well, I think, uh, first, I think you see it in the title of Brinkley's book about him, The Unfinished Presidency. I think he saw that there there were things that he couldn't do as an elected official around the world that he could do with the Carter Center. I think it took a little bit for him and for, and for Rosalind to figure out that that is where they wanted to spend their time and how they wanted to make a difference in the world. But it goes back to that commitment to uh, using what you had, and in fact he talks about the presidency as a springboard uh, to doing better things in the world. I think that was the secret. Linda Pigshat, thank you so much for coming in. Thank so many you. topics, so little time. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for joining this week on Inside Politics. Hope you'll be back here again for a future show. If you can't get to politics in the meantime, go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.